The climax of the mission began on February 27, 1942, when nine Norwegian commandos, regular men who, by means of their tact and bravery, forever changed the course of history. They skied out in the dead of winter to blow up the water pipes in the basement of their homeland's heavy water production plant. They wouldn't understand the significance of their mission at the time. However, even two years prior, nobody in the world could have understood even the significance of the plant, no less the fact that victory in the world's deadliest conflict hinged on its sabotage. This is the story of Operation Gunnerside. It was April 9, 1940, when German warships began entering all of the major Norwegian ports and thousands of Nazi soldiers were deployed to begin a hostile takeover of the nation. The German forces were able to evade British laid explosives meant to protect the Norwegian seaports on the instructions of Norway's fascist loyal commander. However, as a foreshadow to the continued subversive refusal to surrender to a veritable behemoth of an opponent that would proceed to characterize the Norwegian people throughout the duration of the Second World War, the Norwegian government refused to concede their nation. Germany proceeded to implement a puppet regime, which the Norwegian people refused to obey, and the Norwegian forces continued to fight in alliance with British troops. However, despite their fervent efforts to avoid an overt takeover, German forces overwhelmed the Norwegians after a sudden British reallocation of soldiers to defend an impending loss of power in France. Though it wouldn't become incredibly evident for another two years after the Nazi occupation in Norway first began, in securing Norway, German forces found themselves on the precipice of victory in the entirety of the Second World War. Germany now had possession of Vomork, home to the world's first, and at the time only, heavy water plant. In fact, were it not for continued Norwegian defiance to concede to the odds of defeating the world's most dangerous regime, Nazi forces likely would have prevailed. The heavy water plant of Vomork was regarded by Allied leaders as, quote, on the thin line separating victory and defeat. Winston Churchill even described the term heavy water itself as a, quote, sinister term, eerie, unnatural. Vomork was home to the lone heavy water production plant in the world, heavy water being a key ingredient in the German atomic bomb research program. Atomic bomb production was preempted by the production of plutonium, which required a nuclear reactor, which couldn't be produced without heavy water. Though multiple steps removed from the final product, heavy water is irreplaceable, and was the catalyst to creating German state-sponsored weapons of mass destruction. Scientifically, heavy water is known as deuterium, which National Geographic describes as an isotope of hydrogen, and says that it has a neutron in its nucleus, making it heavier. It is very rare, and there is one part heavy water for every 41 million molecules of regular water, and has this ability as a so-called moderator. In an atomic reaction, it slows down bombarding neutrons and doesn't absorb them, which fosters a chain reaction. Heavy water requires extreme levels of both water and power to produce, and chemistry professor Leif Tronstad in 1939 felt Norway would be the perfect host to a plant which he envisioned as a headquarters, meant to use mountain water for electrolysis to produce ammonia for nitrogen fertilizer. Neil Bascom writes in his book The Winter Fortress, which covers the story of Operation Gunnerside, that Leif Tronstad is a brilliant scientist with a brilliant mind, but all he wants to do is be parachuted back into Norway to fight on the ground against Germans. Though it wouldn't have been Tronstad's first time fighting Germans on the ground, as he briefly left then ultimately resumed his teaching duties in order to defend Norway amidst the onset of the German invasion in 1940. Upon the return to his teaching position, Tronstad began giving the Allies information regarding German interest in the heavy water plant he designed. After the realization that he could no longer stay in Norway, he left his family behind and escaped to England, where he began working more heavily with Allied military leaders. He persuaded British and American forces not to pursue miscalculated attacks, such as leveling the plant with bombs, which would have missed the crucial inner workings of the building's basement. Most critically, Tronstad provided a small team, led by Joachim Rohnberg, a man with no military experience outside of a crash course he had received in England, and consisting of a teacher, a postman, a tour guide, and a factory worker, with a guide to every block, stairwell, and entry point. Before ever reaching the building itself, broaching the area was a formidable task in and of itself. It was placed specifically in an area that was meant to be a natural fortress, leaving the infiltrating team with three options for entry. First, cross the single lane suspension bridge heavily guarded by German soldiers. Second, broach the landmine riddled mountains above the plant. Third, wade through a half frozen river in the valley below, then scale a 500 foot mountain in the middle of the night in late February in Norway. Unfortunately, they are forced to choose the latter. However, since they'd overcome the natural obstacles, due to Tronstad's aforementioned detailed specificity on the inner workings of the plant, they were able to slip into the building entirely undetected, and set all of the explosives with Nazi forces none the wiser until it was too late. The attack resulted in the plant being decommissioned for months, dissuaded an expedited Nazi production of a functioning atomic bomb, 
gave the Allies the time advantage they needed to overtake the arms race that turned the tide of the Second World War. All in the merits of an inexperienced team of essentially ordinary men with the hearts to put their lives on the line to accomplish an extraordinary feat. However, as heroic as their efforts were on that day and the lead up to seeing it through, their personal stories didn't end on that day. The men were forced to live underground for years on end, in isolation for some. Leif Tronstead wrote that, quote, War makes the mind very hard. Becoming a sensitive person will not be easy. Neil Bascom stated that, quote, They took the end of the war in different ways. Some went to the woods and found solace there. Others found it in drinking, and others never found it. The loss of life and the mental tolls of war are an enduring tragedy of armed conflict that can never be understated. Even the leader of the heroics that took place on February 27, 1942, Joachim Rohnberg, is hesitant to speak too often on his experiences. However, he understands the significance of his actions and those of the millions others who gave their life in one form or another and stated the harsh reality that, quote, you have to fight for your freedom and for peace. You have to fight for it every day, to keep it. It's like a glass boat. It's easy to break, it's easy to lose. When the time came, Rohnberg and all those who risked their lives for the success of Operation Gunnerside fought and won to keep their freedom and the freedom of millions of others. We hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you.